All right, this is how to change a hub assembly for a Chevy, Chevy Uplander, Malibu, Grand Am, Pontiacs, all that. Um, if you have a problem with your traction control light, ABS light, and check engine light all on at the same time, it's probably your hub, your speed sensor going out, so you're going to have to replace the whole hub assembly. Um, sometimes you'll hear like an airplane sound coming from it, you know, a humming and that means your bearings are going bad or whatever but this is a quick thing I already took off the tire and the brakes you should know how to do that if you're gonna try to tackle this so anyway what you're gonna need is a ratchet a 15 millimeter a 13 millimeter extension you'll need a torque wrench and your hub Hub assembly. I just bought this off of eBay for thirty dollars. It's better to buy a Timken or a Moog, but if you want to pay two hundred, you can. Uh, you're going you're gonna to want anti-seize and your brake grease, of course. Uh, they don't use anti-seize at the factory. That's why they uh, they get all seized up and they're really hard to get off. Sometime, but I already replaced this one, so it shouldn't be that hard to get off but sometimes you really gotta beat it beat it out hard so anyway we'll start by loosening the axle nut with your with a 35 millimeter axle nut all you're gonna want to do is break it free All right, I'm gonna remove the caliper bracket. It's gonna take a 15 millimeter. There's two bolts back here. Sometimes they're really hard to get off. So the best thing to do is just turn your wheel so it's easier to get at. Because if you don't turn it, you're just gonna fight it. Uh, if you need a cheater bar for your bracket or a bigger half inch drive, then I'd so use that. Break it free. Break your other one free. And just remove it. Sometimes they're seized in there. and remove your axle nut off all the way and we gotta turn the wheel again okay I forgot to say you need a T30 bit to take this set screw out and uh, also don't let your caliper hang I accidentally had it hanging you can really mess up your line So you got to remove that. Sometimes they're really hard, so you might have to use some some kind of penetrating oil. So take that out. It's just a set screw. You're gonna have to get a hammer. All right, now you remove it. It's seized up, so. See how you could probably use put some an, some anti seize in there. You should put on there so this don't uh, freeze up. So we'll do that. I'll show you. So just put this aside. 
and you're going to want to turn your wheel again to get to your three hub bolts. You got three hub assembly bolts back here, one here, one up in here, and one on the other side. And that's going to take a 13 millimeter. So you're going to want to do that and your extension. Sometimes these are seized in there too, so you might need a cheater bar or a half inch drive. You just don't want to strip them. So loosen it up, but don't take it all the way out until you got the other three, other three of them uh, loosened. All right, now you're going to want to turn your wheel the other way. Not start your car, though. All right. So now that you're on this side, you should disconnect your speed sensor. Disconnect your speed sensor. It's a clip that sticks into this bracket. You just got to squeeze it together and it pulls out. This bracket will come off when you uh, take off your thing, but you're going to put it back on. So here's your last one. Remember, when you put these back in, they go down. They go to 85 pound torque when you set them in. So, so there are three bolts like that. I want to turn your wheel back and forth. All right. Sometimes they're real hard. I got all the, the three bolts out. So sometimes they're really hard to get off. See how it's loose there? But the thing's not going to pop off. So you're just going to have to beat it really hard. Keep, keep going at it. That's why it's really important to use a lot of anti-seize in there. Clean it up. Don't. It'll just cause havoc, and you won't ever get it out. Well, you will, but you and a lot of headache. See, it pops right out like that. See, if I didn't use anti-seas before, I would have had to beat it, beat it for about a half an hour. But this job shouldn't take more than a half an hour. See the corrosion? I don't think I used enough anti-seas in there. Um, This wasn't quite making the humming yet, but the ABS light was coming off, so just junk. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean this up real quick, and we're going to throw anti-seize here, clean this up, and then we'll come back. Alright, here's the new hub assembly. Either way, if you buy a Timken or the Chinese cheap thing. It don't matter. I mean, it does matter for quality, of course, but you want to go in, have your wheel sensor plug the same way you had it before, 
Make sure it's the right one, which it is. I already looked. So, make sure you... How I cleaned this up was with a wire brush. That's a wire brush if you don't know. Wire brush cleaned all the corrosion off, especially if you live in north, the northern states. You'll get it from all the salt. So, take that anti-seize and just coat it. You're not going to hurt nothing. And they should use this stuff at the factory, but, you know, you don't pay enough for a car nowadays. So, that's how it goes. So, make sure it's on there. Make sure you get the axle spindle because that seizes up in there, too. Get back here. That stuff corrodes good. I mean, you don't... That way, if you ever change it or somebody else ever changes it again, they won't have that problem. It comes off quick, and like I said, should take a half an hour. You know, it's probably why those shops charge you three, four hundred dollars to change a bearing, which is kind of stupid, but that's another issue. So, stick, pull your axle up like that, push your wheel sensor plug through the side. Make sure it comes out. Don't pinch the wire or mess the wire up. Make sure you go in the grooves. You'll feel it going to the axle grooves. All right. Then you can go ahead and So, all right, this is my bad. I forgot to put this plate on that holds the sensor, which I did before. So that was my bad, I know. So make sure you put that on or else you'll have to, at least I caught it before I had the whole thing assembled. So turn those, turn your hub assembly so it lines up with your bolts. Make sure your axle's in there. Then you can start your start your nuts. Them up, tighten them all the way because you gotta you might have to move it around a little so and when you do get there like I said before these get torqued down to 85 pounds of pressure with your torque bar so don't forget to do that So when you do end up torquing it down, you're going to want to turn your wheel so you have more room and everything. But Snug them all up. All 
Alright. Alright. You set your torque to 85, your torque wrench to 85. 85 pounds of pressure. You do it till you hear a click. So, all right. Okay, we got those torqued down. Uh, attach your wheel sensor. Clip it back into your bracket, which I forgot. But we put it back on because you're going to need it. It's just that clip thing. Clip it back in. Make sure it's a nice, secure, you know, because if it wobbles around and gets cut again, then you gotta replace it again because your traction light will come on and all that. So turn your wheel to straight. Put your axle nut back on. This gets torqued down to 155. So you know, want to get your. 35 millimeter again. And crank it back up to 155, 150. So. And this will pull your <clears throat> axle in. So then it gets, do it till it clicks. There, that's at 150, 155 torque. And put your disc back on, get your set screw. Find where that is on that. And you know what, I, let's take this back out real quick because I forgot to do something which I think I forgot to do last time. I mean, not forgot because most people don't do it. Slop some of that anti-seize in there because that's why your caliper your disc sticks. So slap that in up in there. Now, now remember, if you go to a garage and have it done, they don't do any of this anyway. So this is just little extra steps you can do for yourself and save it because it's your car. You know, they when they're doing it, they know it's not their car. So and they do it cheap, so they can make more of a profit. They still charge you that shop cost fee. All right, and we set that in. All right. And we want to put your caliper bracket back on.
start both of them, don't tighten them right away. You know, like anything else. And that's a 15 millimeter if you forgot. And that should be about it, but, and you know how to put the brakes together. Make sure you use brake clean. Clean up all the grease and everything before you assemble it. And listen for strange noises when you drive off. So, everything's good. Thanks for watching.